So I'm sure you didn't come to this channel to learn how to change a spark plug on this unit, but if I take this off, I'll try my wrench. Well, it looks surprisingly gray to be honest. But anyway, it might have got colored from the final shutdown. Good news, it's the first manual I've ever seen describe the compression test. So here we are, put my OTC compression tester in there. I've never compression tested a four stroke engine to be real honest with you, but uh, it's written in the book, so let's give it a try. Uh, I got the fuel off, I'll put the throttle to the fast position so the carburetor should be fully open. Then we'll crank it a pile and see where it goes. We have a whopping 90 PSI. Let's keep cranking, let's see what happens. It is 95 PSI. We'll try it again for good measure, but I think that's probably the end of it. 90 PSI. So I'm gonna repeat the compression test again, having dropped some oil into the cylinder. Because uh, I've also had an experience in the past where the range, if they've been sitting for a while, can kind of stick a little bit. Well, so with oil in the cylinder, and that's all we did, we're at about 110 now. So now just going through the book and doing a recap of the steps we had done. And actually I had not looked at the book before I did these steps. So let's see how we made out. 87 PSI, we had 90, 95 dry. And here add some four stroke oil. So there's a note here about if your reading is higher than without oil, then you have a worn cylinder piston or piston ring. In our case here, our reading without oil was actually quite a bit higher than the spec of 87 because we had about 90, 95, so I'm not concerned here at all. Note as well that I had put oil into the cylinder before I even read the book. And if you scroll back in the book a little bit, it says only to put oil in the cylinder if your reading comes out lower than what's specified in the book. Anyway, 87 and 110, I am perfectly okay with that. So I think... The next thing, we're gonna maybe check the valves. So if we do a quick disassembly on the panel, the valve cover. So here we have the tiny little valves. And we will check the clearance on these as well as checking inside the cylinder with a boroscope and see how that looks. So let's try a measurement there, see where we're at. I've never measured these to be real honest. So it's gonna be, um, so we take these, uh, take these shims and I'm gonna try and stick a 0.1 millimeter shim in there, 0 0.1 millimeter. So we'll try and stick that you know, underneath this little rocker. Oh, and it does go we can do 0.11. So to do 0.11, you would combine two shims. If you don't have a 0.11, you can combine a 0.05 and a 0.06 to get that 0.11 and see if you still can go underneath. So here we have the final measured uh, valve clearances. This side here, the 0.12 millimeter wouldn't go in. And so the 0.11 was the most that would go in. And then that's the intake valve. Then on the exhaust valve, the 0.14 would not go in, but the 0.13 would go in, which puts that valve uh, clearance just slightly above spec. So with that being said, something has to be done to correct it. Now the instructions on making the adjustment are in the service manual. Okay. so. I've read the manual, it's pretty direct, and it's much simpler than the motorcycle. Um, essentially, just loosen the lock nut and then turn the adjuster to get that, that clearance to change. So now, with a 14 mil, we lock the lock nut, or lock the adjuster, sorry, in right in position, and then loosen the lock nut. I'm supposing screwing in uh, the adjuster would bring the, the clearance down, which is what we need to do. 
So since we want to aim for the 0.1 millimeter clearance, I'm going to take out the 0.1 uh, millimeter feeler gauge. So now confirm we've got the 87 inch pounds and we do perform that tightening. There we go. So now of course, once it's tight, a person will always wants to check again. We can see that the point one will not go in there. Let's try the point oh nine. Beauty, it's not going in there. It's perfect, of course. Point oh eight does not go in. So I'm gonna do this again, but you'll get the idea of how iterative it is and that you want to really um, double check your, your adjustment because tightening that, that final lock knot on there can, can decrease your clearance again. So I mean, Anyone who's done this before probably knows that. So I'm gonna work on this a little bit and then I'll touch base again. It's probably a 1 16th of a turn in difference. Talk soon. All right, so it took a little bit of um, playing with it to get the feel on how to adjust it. Um, but now it's adjusted and torqued down to 0.1 millimeter. What I'm gonna do since we're in here as well is uh, confirm that the torque on the intake uh, lock nut is set correctly. So I'm gonna try really hard not to move it for obvious reasons. Okay, so that's good. And then this is the one we adjusted, and it's good. So I've got this adjusted to 0.1 millimeter, and this one is where it was before, 0.11. Now, it's kind of obvious, but I'm gonna say it anyway. If you don't need to make an adjustment, don't waste your time making an adjustment. I'm just look inside, make sure there's no dirt and any little specks of dirt and dust can be picked up with a Q-tip. That's what I like to do. And just make sure you don't leave the Q-tip hairs behind though. Then look, final examination inside, make sure your child hasn't gone and put anything in there like I did to my dad once. And then once you're good, you put the valve cover back on. I do not Loctite uh, engine bolts as a general rule. So you can put all the four bolts back in there. 11 newton meters, not 10 newton meters for these four bolts. So okay, so now that this is done, you got to bend the clip back down 90 degrees so that it holds this breather tube correctly and push that in. And what I'm going to do now is set up for the boroscope. 